Okay, so again, um, quiz three is similar to the first two quizzes. The format's a little bit different in that there's a few more true and false items. So there's gonna be 16 true and false total. Again, they're all worth half a point. There's gonna be seven multiple choice items worth one point each, one item which is matching, and two items that are short answer uh, worth four points total. Again, all the points would add up to 21 points, so you could potentially get more than 100%. Um, and those extra points add a little bit of wiggle room for if you don't know some of the items. Okay, so some important things to know for this quiz, one of which is hypothesis testing. So um, when we're doing hypothesis testing, we're trying to reduce both type one and type two error. Um, type one error is that we're trying to limit the chance that we reject the null hypothesis when it's actually true. And we're also trying to limit type two error and that we want to limit that we accept or fail to reject the null hypothesis when it's actually false. Also, it's important to know the difference between a one-tail test and a two-tail test. So in a one-tail test, we're specifying the directionality uh, versus a two-tail test. We might just be saying that there's a difference, uh, but not saying that it's in any one direction um, greater or less than. So again, the two-tail test is when there's not a specific directionality to the hypothesis being tested. And just so that you're aware, the p-value of 0.05 or less indicates statistical significance. So unless there's a good reason why, um, generally that's the threshold that we would say that this change isn't due to chance alone. So some important things about quantitative analysis, you can compute both the test statistic and a measure of association. Um, a couple other point, important points here is just to know that uh, the difference between a positive correlation and a negative correlation. So in a positive correlation is one in variable increases, the other also increases. Likewise, in a positive correlation, if one variable decreases, so does the other. Um, lots of times people get this confused because a negative correlation just would mean that as one goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. And just to be important, some of the limitations. So when using a test of statistical significance, our job isn't to prove the study's hypothesis is true, but to gather enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And something that we spent a, a good chunk of time talking about in quantitative analysis is the uh, the normal distribution and standard deviations and what those mean. Um, so if we were to look at a normal distribution, 68% of data would fall within plus one or negative one standard deviation of the mean. 95% um, would be within two standard deviations and 99.7 would be within three standard deviations. So for, for instance here, also if you have somebody who was in the, the smallest 0.3% would be three standard deviations below the mean, the smallest 2.5%, and the top 2.5% would be um, negative two standard deviations below the mean and positive two standard deviations above the mean. So as opposed to quant quantitative analysis, qualitative analysis is a little bit different. So um, some conclusions from qualitative data, we would actually want to be a little bit more subjective and like we can enhance our results by being honest informants and kind of reflecting on our experience versus quantitative data, Q, U, A, and T, like my name, um, you'd want to be more, more objective and more neutral uh, versus qualitative data. You could actually en enhance your results by reflecting on your experience. Um, it's also important to know what ideographic causal explanation is, which is a concrete individual sequence of events, thoughts, or actions that result in a particular outcome for a particular individual, which is different than the nomothetic causal explanation, which um, you can find in your book. And in qualitative research, deciding on a sample, that's something that we've covered quite a bit in that section, uh, but we want, same thing, a representative sample that would best represent the variation found within that population. And we spent a section talking about program analysis. So it's important to know the difference between inputs and outputs. Also outputs versus outcomes. So we could say an output would be number of therapy sessions completed versus an outcome would be decreasing number of outbursts at school. Also to be aware of the logic model and to be aware that we're trying to decrease the amount of scope creep, which is um, kind of overextending our resources. And maybe lastly, just to be aware of the difference between median, mean, median, and mode, and how skew can affect that. So if we're looking at a perfectly distributed bell curve, um, the mean and the median should be the same. So mean is the average, median is the middle 50%, and mode is the most frequently occurring. So even slight skew can throw these off. 
So in these examples, you could see even the the um, the positively skewed example in the bottom that's kind of in the dashed blue. We can see that the mode is the one that occurs the most frequently, which is the kind of like looks like 0.38. Potentially, it seems like most people's in this distribution scored at 0.38 versus in both of these examples, the median is the green line. So that's the middle 50%. 50% of people scored below the green line and 50% scored above. And the mean is the blue line here. So that's the average. So the average score of the all of the items together and divided by the number of observations. So just if you look at a graph, just kind of be sure that you understand what those different concepts are.